simplify each expression. I think the word simplify in math can be one of the most complicated things because if we would make a list of all the different situations where you have the word or the command simplify in a math question, it means something different for a whole bunch of stuff. Like if it said simplify 5x plus 2x, well there it means combine like terms. But if it says simplify 8 over 10, well there it means put your fraction in lowest terms. And if it said simplify 3 over root 5, well there it means rationalize the denominator. So the word simplify is one of the most complex words in mathematics. Now in this case, for logarithms, simplify each expression, what it means there is you need to write it as a single logarithm. So when we look at our three formulas here, we want to take everything that's written on the right-hand side of the formula and change it to be written as the left-hand side of the formula. So in our first one, we have log 7 plus log 8. If we write out the corresponding log law, log a of m n is equal to log a of m plus log a of n. This is the general formula. A couple of things that are important in this formula. We need, on the right hand side there's two logs. In order to use this log law, the bases have to be the same. So in our question A, are the bases the same? Yes, they're both base 10. So those are the common logs that have a base of 10. And if the bases are the same, then you're allowed to multiply, okay? So in this case, we're adding, so we can write this together as log of 7 times 8, which is log of 56, and this would be simplified. If you had to estimate this, what would you estimate this as? forget how to do logs. Well, remember log solve for exponents. So when we have log of 56, we're saying 10 to what power would be 56? 1.7, 1. point something. We'll make that a question mark. Does that look like a question mark? No. 1. point something. I'll leave it like that. I like that. That is a very good answer, don't you think? one point something. I mean, we could go to our calculator and find it out more exact if we wanted to, but that's close enough. We know that it's between one and two. For B, in B it's looking at a second log law. So I'll put a one here. I'll write a second log law here. Here we have a number out in front multiplying by that log. And on our formula sheet, we have this law. Now, this is the law whenever there is a number out in front multiplying that can go as an exponent to change it from the right side to the left side. Later, if you're changing from the left to the right, anytime you have an exponent inside, you can move that exponent out in front. So we want to simplify it, which means write it as a single log, which means we're always going to write it as the left side of all of these formulas. In this case, that 5 out in front will go in as an exponent, and that's equal to log of 32, which is approximately 0.5. A little less than the something above. That's a long approximation. Whew! That looks like a really accurate, <laughs> a really accurate approximation. One point something, a little less than the something above, because 32 is smaller than 56. And then part C. 
Well, that's going to get to our third log law. Our third log law says that if you are dividing inside of a log, it's the same as subtracting. And just like the multiplication one, it's important to notice in the formula that the bases have to be the same. Sometimes you may get a question where it's log base 3 of something minus log base 2 of something, then you will not be able to use your log laws. But in this case, they're both base 10. Oh. So that gives us log of 80 divided by 16, which is equal to log of 5 approximately zero point something. Questions you can do after this one are 4 and 12. But we'll do example 2 first before we work on those.